out here. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the RationalInvestor.co's. Uh, this is our weekend uh, frivolity, our broiler chicken show. -na 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 -na. Hey, and we're live on YouTube. See, there's a bunch of people sitting on YouTube. Uh, so welcome. Uh, I think I did this as a, uh, a public um, uh, tweet and YouTube video. Uh, some people were actually asking recently um, if uh, we could do maybe some coinage shows, some uh, some a little bit more public uh, offerings. I uh, can imagine um, this is going to be a little bit of a tough time for people in the market right now. And if anything, I think what we probably need is just a big old dose of PMA here to try and uh, Try and keep our heads on straight. Um, so where do we begin? Um, I, you know, the weekend shows, I do like to um, try and address a lot of the uh, questions that are asked by our community uh, through the week. Uh, if I don't have time through the weekly videos to address them, I try to go out of my way to do that here. So we'll probably spend a, a good chunk of this video just going through some of your ideas um and just i'll give you my my two cents um you know i think we probably should just start off with this basic idea that uh markets don't always go up and especially if you have assets that go up from like you know thousand two thousand dollars uh all the way up to you know nineteen twenty thousand dollars and i suppose in canadian dollars into the twenty almost thirty thousand dollars in a very, very short period of time, we have to expect that there's going to be some cleanup on the other side of it. Uh, and unfortunately, that is exactly what we're going through right now. Uh, very natural, very normal. Um, I, I fully appreciate that new people to investing um, don't see this as as normal and and very typical price action um i would imagine uh, and there unfortunately i am also seeing on on the public uh, message boards and stuff a lot of doom and gloom and there are some people in the public spotlight that don't help the situation they it's almost like they they take joy in rubbing uh it in the faces of people that uh didn't understand that you you know we we want to try and abo avoid buying up markets um and are you know stirring the pot and i i don't think that that's that's constructive for for new people to investing um and you know i think i wanted to take a, a bit of time today to not necessarily talk to anybody in particular, but just talk to the general sort of quote unquote new investor and what should I be thinking through all of this? What just happened? Um, we probably should also start off with just the basic notion that everybody should understand that when, uh, when Julian and I started this company in 2014, we were going through exactly the same thing. No difference. Nothing is different here. Um, that particular market saw an absolutely insane run up from, you know, hundreds of dollars. In fact, I think the bottom was like $50 US uh, to well over a thousand. And people were just in awe. And I remember I came into the uh, crypto space right around that time. And I did a lot of work on um, sites like TradingView, and we did free education programs. And ironically enough, when you actually give away this information for free, people only value that information based on what they have to pay for it. So I actually, when I did do this for free, and everybody should understand that I, I am coming from this from a very altruistic uh, perspective. Uh, my peers in the industry that, that I came from would charge many, many, many multiples for the for the uh, for the information that we put together for for you guys in this education program that we run. I used to give this away for free, but ironically enough, through that period, people um, literally blew themselves up as I was trying to teach this stuff for free. 
Um, and and there's that, that old saying that, that my father used to tell me because he was in sales forever and he used to always say people value the information based on what they have to pay for it. So in a weird sort of way, um, I had to move away from that free model. But please understand, everybody, I'm coming from this from an absolutely altruistic uh, perspective. Um, and I only have the best intentions here. And we try to keep the, 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 the site membership uh, fee extremely low and uh, the course fees that we charge and that this stuff works. And the interesting thing is, those people that took our education programs through 2014, 2015, even in through 2016, they did extremely well. And ironically enough, when I talked to any of those, especially our, our alumni, none of them seem to look at the market action right now as a big surprise. It's just sort of like, well, you know, this is what markets do. Um, so, you know, if anything, um, what I'm telling people on the site right now is, especially people that are in the education program and are relatively new, is take the time now to educate yourself. Put in the time and effort to learn how to do this correctly. And if it means uh, you, you went and did some buying, um, you can you have a choice literally you can either blow the position out and take the loss and move on with your life or you can take this opportunity to really learn from this um and those people that are really interested in the crypto space and actually are crypto enthusiasts there really isn't any change to what's gone on here the big problem in the market is that the prices of these assets just went to astrono astronomical levels and one might even argue on a regular basis on our site, we keep talking about what is value? What is, uh, how do you actually put value on these cryptocurrencies? And that's where we get back to conversations about things like the cost of production. Um, so, uh, you know, no doubt about it. Uh, I've been seeing it across Twitter. It's remarkable to watch, you know, we, uh, on Twitter, we talk about the OGs um and the ogs are taking it on the chin lately and it's incredible to watch the infighting and the viciousness that's going on right now in this space i will fully uh you know uh, testify admit whatever you want to say that we have a few people on tri that are saying brian you know um I, ca I came to the space at the top of the market. Maybe I, I loaded up uh, through the top, which, you know, I tried to slow people down through that event. Um, and you are going to have to learn what bull and bear markets look like and how to act appropriately. There's a reason why we are nibbling. Nibble is, uh, is the absolute, you know, ultimate... I'm interested in this market, but I, I'm very concerned about the trend, if you will, just in simplest terms, and I ain't going to go and bet the farm. I really like this idea. I like the location. I like it, but I'm not going to go bet the farm. And the whole purpose of our little old lady approach to investing is, remember, she doesn't really want to be bugged by me on a regular basis as her broker she wants to know that her money is working and that it's well diversified and if she has to sit underwater for a while well so be it um and we all need to understand that and i, I repeatedly mention this that you know the average brokerage house um will every single recommendation every single trade that they tell people do they say you know you got to have a three to five year time horizon there's a reason for that the interesting thing is if you follow that thinking, Goldman Sachs coming out, and I specifically remember they came out with a research report in uh, 2014 or beginning of 2014, recommending to their clients to buy Bitcoin at $1,000. And if you add that three to five year time horizon, well, those clients did very, very well uh, on that uh, recommendation. So really what this comes down to is you have to, really vet out what type of risk taker you are. And I'm seeing I'm seeing some some feedback from people. Well, 
you know, uh, you talk about little old lady approach to investing, and we see that you did really well on uh, the uh, the portfolio that you're running on the site, Brian. So why aren't I making a million dollars too? What's going on? Why am I underwater? Well, please understand, and you know, everybody on uh, the YouTube page and everybody on the uh, Hangout here, we should all answer this. Can somebody tell me how much I started this crypto portfolio with? Uh, back in 2014, which really isn't that long ago, it was like 560 US dollars. And you know, our site right now, unfortunately, we're making a transition to a new website. So the reporting of this site is a little bit splotchy right now. I fully understand that and appreciate that the data isn't as clear as it could be. But even now, like I know for certain that we're sitting on about a hundred and um, hundred and twenty thousand uh in um the you know stable coins tethers and those kind of things and new bits and <laughs> new bit stable coin yeah right um sbds and uh we got like twenty thirty thousand in gold that's not reported on this i think the altcoin portfolio just on trex right now is sitting at about a hundred and change um so Please, everyone, understand that um, I'm not really in a big hurry here. Um, I've I've paid myself. Um, I'm more than happy just to sit and nibble away. And you can see that even in this shitty market, I'm in here nibbling away. Very, very small positions. In fact, uh, this was a, an interesting uh, idea that came up. Uh, recently, and I just spread a whole bunch of little orders around because uh, we don't have any of this salt, and I wanted to get some on the books. You can even see into um, uh, recent, we can, I suppose, look at it if you want to. We actually did a little bit of nibbling here um, on this uh, storage this morning. Um, so please understand, when you look at these buys, these are not very big buys, incredibly small amounts. Um, and I'm not really in a big hurry here right now. In fact, you know, we did a, um, repeatedly at the beginning of the year, we, uh, showed our site members. I tweeted it out to the public, the idea that, um, that the first half of this year could be pretty nasty and gee whiz, that's exactly what's happened. I will say though, that what I'm noticing here just of late is, you know, like I said, the ankle biting, the infighting is getting vicious. Uh, the Twitter rhetoric is is just nasty right now. Um, I do understand, and unfortunately, this is this is probably more uh, an emotional response rather than an outright um, financial response. In that. If you actually did like the ideas, the fundamental stories, um, really nothing should have changed, especially if you're doing Little Old Lady. You're just going in there and you're nibbling on ideas that you like. And, you know, for those people that are, you know, uh, hey, I, I came here to get rich quick. Well, you're learning right now that trading and making money from trading over the long haul it is a marathon it is not a sprint and bear markets you know the sad part about it is i remember specifically sitting in the tri lounge last summer bitcoin was a thousand two thousand bucks right people were tickled pink if we if somebody had said well you know uh bitcoin's going to top out and even if we use today's price it's six thousand dollars People would have been more than happy. Oh, you mean I get like uh, three, four X on my money? Um, eh, that's great. What's ended up happening here, and you know, for those people that are really interested in crypto, what you have to understand is what's really going on here. Does it make sense, people? Maybe somebody can give me feedback. What's the one thing that the, the higher ups, the one percenters can do to make sure that Bitcoin is not adopted as a universal currency and a, um, a, um, a means of leaving the fiat currency system? Is there because, you know, it's I, in my opinion, I think it's next to impossible to break the blockchain now. No, actually, Rucker, I would say the exact opposite. 
the way that you want to uh, prevent the public from even considering using Bitcoin as an alternative to the fiat currency system is make it so insanely volatile, the public can't make head or tail out of what the hell's going on in the market. So, you know, number one, is it realistic for assets to go 10x in under a year and for that to be sustainable? Come on, people. I mean, this is, uh, this is investing 101. Ironically enough, and like I said a moment ago with all the Twitter OGs and all that shit and stuff, everybody understands Reload Zones on the site. If you're on YouTube and you don't understand Reload Zones, maybe go watch some of our old Coinigy shows and stuff like that. Uh, but the irony of it all is if you are actually an investor in this space, this is actually the time when you want to step up and start investing. And yet, when you look at the public, everybody's like, I'm getting destroyed, I'm wrecked, I'm wiped out. Maybe, and, you know, like one gentleman in particular I was uh, trying to converse with today, I just simply said, maybe you made some mistakes and... You know, if if you went and little old lady to portfolio, well, then really pff, there's nothing to do. You're just sitting there. You got your money working in the market. Just let it work. And if you really did believe in the little old lady portfolio, then there's really nothing to do. You're just sitting here twiddling your thumbs and your money's just working for you in the market. And if they are half decent fundamental ideas, try to buy coins with not too many coins out that are, you know, uh is there any letter of the alphabet on the weekly charts that maybe we should try and hunt for to try and help us <laughs> thank you jonas thank you rocker you know i i've repeatedly said this over and over and over and over you want to make this as easy as possible for you try and invest your money with assets that have weekly w's and try to get your butt in there near those weekly w's I suppose one could argue you don't have to follow the little old lady risk management approach. We have four different type of risk takers in the education program that we teach. Some of those risk takers, they will cut their losses. The key here is we just don't ever break the 5% rule. You know, like a margin trader, they might have to put a big chunk of their account down to, you know, put on a margin position. Does that mean they're going to risk the whole damn thing? No. They're going to make damn sure that if they hit 5% uh, capital drawdown, they're going to get the fuck out of there. Excuse me, YouTube. Sorry. Not allowed to swear there. Um, so what I'm seeing in the market right now is a lot of FUD, right? I, hon I honestly think this from the bottom of my heart, people, I honestly think Crypto's not going anywhere. The key here ultimately is what is value. And unfortunately in this game, and I often suggest people, especially in these kind of markets, let's really, you know, try and decide when we're going to pull the trigger based off of US dollar denominated, you know, if you're interested in altcoins versus going and investing uh, versus Bitcoin. Because you might find that your altcoin may just do nothing while Bitcoin comes down. And if you're valuing your portfolio in Bitcoins, well, then you're just like, oh, man, I'm getting killed here. Well, maybe let's take a look at the altcoin relative to USD. And does it have a USD weekly W working? Um, all right. So uh, those are just some basic thoughts that I, uh, that I had done and I wanted to start off with. Uh, first off, let's try and remove the emotion. Uh, let's try and play from a, a plan. And, you know, if you do decide to do the little old lady approach, then you have to understand that she's busy at Canasta and working in the garden. She doesn't really want to be bugged. But if you've done your fundamental analysis and you've done your technical analysis and you're buying in reload zones, well, you just got to let your money work for you. Um. If you want to trade setups, we can build uh, plans around setups. And of course, if those setup uh, levels fail, then you got to get out. I think uh, it's dangerous for anybody in particular to call this is the bottom. Usually bottoms form over 
long periods of time. Uh, and of course, you know, that's our whole conversation about weekly W's. And as you can see on this weekly chart, we don't have any W's working. So this isn't a rip roaring bull market. We have an expression on the site and I think it's uh, more than that. Probably should show you the uh, cool little picture uh, that um, that we always post in our lounge through these kind of markets. And this market may go on for a little while, people. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, where is that picture? Sometimes in the market. And, it, you know, I was actually thinking that there should be a, um, a seasonal rally here through the summer. That's usually what happens in the crypto space. But it's interesting. Um, I used to be a commodities broker way back when. And we used to use the funny expression. Uh, well, not use. But everything that we, uh, we uh, produced and sent out and marketing material had to have right across stamped right across the top. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Why? Well, it turns out the last commodity cycle, the last fear cycle, everything that we just went through in crypto, because I think that this was this fear cycle's proxy. Um, commodity markets went up and then they had to spend a year or so. You know, your typical bear market is 18 months in duration. And they had to spend a year or so cleaning themselves up. And there wasn't a seasonal rally in like 1980, 81, 82 in the gold market. Uh, that could very easily be the case here in crypto. Not going to sugarcoat it one bit. Don't put yourself into a position where you have to depend on money that you're investing in a highly speculative space to pay your rent. That is asking for trouble. There's a reason why we call this speculative venture capital, uh, risk capital. The money that you put to work in this space, you have to be able to afford to lose. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to lose the money. It might just mean that that money is just going to sit and work in the marketplace, and it's going to take some time for you to see a return. Totally fine. And I don't think anybody here at TRI sugarcoated the idea that you're basically going to guarantee an income for yourself on a monthly basis trading venture capital. It doesn't work that way. Interestingly enough, in venture capital, when the market does go screaming up, you can be handed a lot of money very quickly. And it's your job. And this is one thing that really bothered me. I actually had somebody say that they've been uh, working in the space and in Bitcoin since 2015, and yet they're wiped out. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. If you actually were long for Bitcoin 2015, that was the bottom when it hit 150 bucks, and you didn't make any money through this rally? Oh, man, that there's something not right about your trading plan. You've done something wrong. And... Let's call a spade a spade. I don't expect you guys to be experts at this right off the gate. And especially if you're not even in the education program, and you're just like maybe just a basic site member or you're just messing around on, uh, on uh, you know, coinage shows and on Twitter and following the OGs and stuff. It's going to be a tough learning process for you. But uh, to hear that somebody hasn't made any money through that whole bull market and didn't pay themselves, that's a little disappointing. And that, to me, sounds like a function of, hey, we, we, something is missing from the trading plan. My advice to those people that didn't make any money through that is you got to get buckled down. The great part about crypto, like we said, is that this market has built in inflation. Remember the Goldman Sachs reference uh, at $1,000. I feel very comfortable that Bitcoin will be at new highs. Uh, we know that the next happening event is 2020-ish. So let's take the time now, learn from the mistakes that we've made, and let's try and position ourselves so that the next bull market, we are going to take some profits on the way up. So the point that I was trying to make just a moment ago, and I was trying to find the picture is, sometimes in the market, we have to just cool our jets.
Everybody sees this image, right? Maybe take a screenshot of that and save it. I, I have it as, you know, sort of my screen capture. We show this on the site a lot. Sometimes in capitalism, the best thing for you to do is just pause. And I would also say, too, the last comment I'll make here is, you should not ever come to a venture capital market like crypto with money that you have to have to pay for rent and bills and speculate with that that is a colossal mistake and in fact the very first week of our education program we sit down with our students and we say and and it is imperative that you build your plan around are these risks even appropriate for someone like myself got to call a spade a spade here people this is venture capital no ifs ands or buts now that doesn't mean you can't participate in this space and have your money working there's nothing wrong with that and if you did little old lady, then really what you're talking about right now are paper gains and paper losses. Your money's working. It's just the way it is. It's venture capital. I also talk to people too, and I say, you know what? If you really want to win at this, and of course in the next face rip bull market, you know, uh, uh, make damn sure you're going to pay yourself and, you know, when you talk Lambos and all that kind of crazy talk. But if you have to go get a second job right now while your money is working for you to make sure that the rent is paid, the bills are paid, your family obligations are met, well, you got to get off your fucking ass and go get that second job. That's just life. I mean, you can bitch and moan about it, but that's the way life goes sometimes. And then I guarantee you, if you have to get that second job flipping burgers, Every goddamn burger you flip, you're going to be like, okay, I'm going to build my plan. And then, okay, I mean, the next time a uh, market runs up, I'm going to force myself to put take profits and throw some of this profit into the bank. These are sometimes really hard lessons to learn. I think a lot of my students, um, they listen to us and they learn this fairly quickly. I don't see a lot of students blow themselves up. I did used to see it when I used to give this information away for free. And it really bothered me when I first did this in 2014, seeing people blow themselves up, even though I was trying to help them. I've noticed that when people have to actually invest money in this uh, program and information, they respect it a lot more and they follow the rules and they build plans and they force themselves to pay themselves. This might be your... You know, like I said, typical bear markets are 18 months. We're already six months into this. So that means we could basically have a year of just sitting on our hands, waiting for this thing to ultimately bottom. That's brutal reality, people. Get used to it. We can always build day trading plans. Some of the, like a uh, couple of our site participants have just been knocking the cover off the ball, going long and short, day trading, swing trading. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but if you did take the very basic conservative approach, little old lady type of investing, really, there's not a heck of a lot for us to do right now. You are in essence, just cooling your jets. I know you want your Lambo now rocker. I understand. All right. So I did need to do a little bit of that and I don't mean to sound like a dick, uh, but, uh, I'm a little concerned, you know, like I said, we're seeing a lot of infighting on Twitter. This is basically what should happen through these markets. I wanted this, this video, you know, especially I did this for, uh, the public and, um, for the YouTube audience, um, had a lot of, I mean, we could talk about my weekend. I, I, I had a lot of fun at the Doge convention. Um, just getting in touch with the crypto people, the people that it doesn't really matter whether crypto's in a bull or a bear, they are going to be in this space come hell or high water. They believe in this story. And if that's the case, great. Uh, and I, did, I didn't see a single person at, at the party last night that I attended to 
that was even really that interested in price right now. They're more interested in the fundamental story. The great part about uh, TRI is uh, you can come to us to help you just time your purchases a little bit better so you don't go and buy the top. You know, I I distinctly remember having conversations with some, uh, even some people that took the level one course when we were running up here and they were saying there's no way Bitcoin is ever coming back down. Well, <laughs> boom, one reload zone. Merry Christmas. This shit happens. It's, it's like clockwork, people. Um, so at the very least, let's just learn from this. And then going forward, we're going to try... And when you see markets going parabolic straight up, maybe just cool your jets. Okay, so uh, that was sort of a, a broader uh, message, um, and especially to the you know like the crypto enthusiast community. From my perspective, I don't see anything new here. If you believe in crypto. Really, your number one job is to sort of figure out what are the fundamental drivers. I went to a couple of presentations. I went to one presentation yesterday at this Doge convention. These guys are going to be fucking rich. The, the, the concepts and the ideas that they're building, you know, uh, you could argue that Bitcoin unto itself is sort of a store of value kind of idea was maybe like, uh, you know, year one, year two, or like if you think of like a baseball game, maybe the first inning, a couple innings. And now what I'm seeing is I'm starting to see the evolutionary process of crypto. And the question for, you know, students of mine believing in this, you know, demographic push, uh, the fear greed cycles, the big question for us now is Bitcoin. And as you can see, it went straight up just as a classic store of value uh, idea should have um through you know the fear cycle apex bitcoin basically did it you know what kills me here guys is i've been trying to teach these concepts to everybody on this site and everybody in the community and everybody on you know youtube and twitter and stuff for the past four or five years about these long-term demographic cycles and the way that they you know fear asset uh, store of value, lack of confidence in the system, asset proxies will go straight up. We've talked lots about how, in my opinion, Bitcoin basically ate gold's lunch through this cycle and all the gold bugs are extremely pissed off at crypto. Everything played out exactly as I teach in these damn courses, which just shocks the hell out of me. Um, but the question now for like crypto enthusiasts is, how does crypto transition now from a store of value story to a growth story? Because we're we're heading into a growth cycle now. And if anything, for crypto enthusiasts, this is where you should get really excited. Because, you know, it's one thing to use crypto as, as that sort of store of value, uh, you know, very static, very sort of one-dimensional uh, story. It's quite another watching the way that these tokens are going to be used to basically monetize everything in our society. And like I said, I watched one presentation yesterday, and they've already built it out, where um, video games that have desirable items in them are actually those desirable items are actually being linked to cryptocurrencies and as these items drop in the various games you can literally watch the person's balance in dollars in actual physical dollars go up as they collect these items in the game so there is they've actually connected monetization to things like video games and performance in video games you know i, I me personally i like to and i was joking with them because uh i like to use i when i was a prop trader uh one of my mentors there used to always say when you're in a trade that's when you're most likely to fuck the trade up so you want to try and actually build into your plan that when you're in a trade and you've already set your entry and your stop and your, and your profit taking levels, that that's actually when you need something to distract you. And he said that, you know, he went and taught himself how to play guitar while in trades. And he's actually a pretty good guitar player now, so it must have worked. 
But I always joke, uh, you know, okay, I'm in this trade. I don't want to fuck it up. I'm just going to go into World of Warcraft and go kill stuff for a while. Now I can actually make an income actually going and farming in World of Warcraft through cryptocurrencies. So I thought that was a fascinating. It was a great presentation, and I should find the, the guys for you. I'll, um, I'll uh, give you the information. Actually, if we retweet them, they said they'll give us uh, – um, coins on, on their system and the system's actually up and running It's cool they actually had a little demo video game where they you know clicked on certain things and found certain things and you literally watch their bank balance go up it was like so cool so the question i have now is how does cryptocurrency morph how does it change from this pure commodity proxy store of value proxy to a growth story and, and the great part about it is you guys are, are the innovators. You guys are the people on the front lines. You know, I, I was so stoked. I mean, I got to tell you, um, I had a lot of fun last night. I went to the uh, Doge uh, convention uh, here in Vancouver. Um, DogeCon Vancouver 2018. And I actually got to meet the guy who actually built Doge. That was so fucking cool. I mean, I, it was so much fun. Um, also, the, uh, the 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 guys who run the DDPs. Uh, this is one of them. Such a great time. Uh, this is uh, this is she did a great presentation, um, and uh, she was actually in one of my pictures from the other night. Uh, I got to kiss the moon. <laughs> I wore a rocket around most of last night. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we had this uh, origami sort of doge uh, thing. You can't really see it that well, but there are lots of other pictures. And we just literally walked around downtown Vancouver for like literally four or five hours just dancing and partying to the music um, and just had a great time. There's Shane. Shane, of course, uh, was all decked out. And the cool part about it is there's this the the state of uh, Doge uh, Con um, video that was going around, and I tweeted it out. Um, and um, and you can see my head in most of the in most of the the video. So I'm actually, and it, I thought it was really cool because if you just sat and looked around the room, I can absolutely guarantee you, like this girl right here. Um, I can't remember what her name is. Uh, but she's going to be a, an industry leader. I would keep a close eye on her. Man, she is one smart cookie. And then this lady, Gio. Wow, she is. She's from like a collective down in California. And wow, what a man! She likes to party hard. <laughs> there she is up on a on a dumpster, just going crazy. And uh, uh, it it was just it was a lot of fun. And I highly encourage you people. The best way for you to survive over the longer time, does anybody know? And actually, it'd be just interesting to see you guys on the on the YouTube page, just so you understand. Does um does anybody know how long I've been at this game? How about you people over there on YouTube? I see there's a good 60, 70 people over there. Does anybody know how long Brian's been at this crazy game called investing and trading? It's a long, long time. Probably, you know, the irony of it all is it's probably longer than some of you guys have even been alive. I've been at this game a long time. Thank you, Steve. You got it. You win the booby prize. Way to go. Um, yeah, I kissed the moon. Woo <laughs> My number one piece of advice for all of you is that if you have any interest in doing this for half as long as I've done this, try and have some fun with this. Try and make this an enjoyable experience. If your money's working for you and you're just participating in the market, well, get to know the participants. Get to know and have fun with these people. Got to tell you, I mean, do you think any of these, like these people are like crypto, like it's in their blood. Um, They're here for the story. The good part about it, you, you, and the, you know, is the good part about this was, um, there's Brian, 
got all dooted up in my rocket <laughs> where I was walking around Vancouver with the rocket on all last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was adorable. I had say I, I really got to say I had a lot of fun. And if anybody uh, was at the convention watching it, got to give a total uh, hats off to all the um, all the uh, um, what do you call them organizers? Uh, they just they just knocked the cover off the ball. Just fantastic job. They they really they really impressed me. I gotta say, and the spirit the spirit is just so beautiful. And I gotta tell you guys, I mean this this is exactly why I'm in this space. This is exactly why I do this. It's for this spirit. Um, there we were all just dancing around the moon. <laughs> just <laughs> it was a hell of a party. I gotta tell you guys. And I was even joking with Shane and with Alex and stuff like that. Is um, it really felt like this was almost like a you know a, a once in a generation event. Um, try to take advantage of this, live the experience, get out there and socialize with your peers, and um, and everyone in the space, and really embrace this moment in time, guys. Because when it goes, it's gone. Um, all right. So anyway, I just wanted to comment on you know PMA. I mean th this is. This is really uh, why I do this is because I really love the spirit of this of of this this space. All right, well, let's maybe get down to some brass tacks here. Um, and everybody, you know, if you want to make a note on the YouTube page, uh, somebody mark down what time it is, and we'll start talking some TA here. But I really wanted it to take some few minutes and just talk a little bit about you know bigger picture, long-term cycles, uh, you know, if you are a little old lady, how you, how should you be feeling? How should you be acting? If you are a trader, then of course you must respect your stops and just hop off and get off on the sidelines. You know, I got to hand it to Julian. Julian uh, is, he is an active trader. And when the market broke down and he was telling everybody on the site when when the market broke down and he in his trading account, he didn't like what he saw. He just got the fuck out. So uh, you have to understand that I built this crypto portfolio to demonstrate the little old lady approach. And I'm perfectly fine with this. This isn't an accurate number. It's a little bit higher than this, but I'm perfectly happy with this number. There is absolutely nothing wrong, in my opinion, with with what I see here. But at the same time, too, people coming to uh, crypto and to Bitcoin and to uh, the site um, and just started, you know, like, let's say in like January or February, you're like, geez, all I see is negatives. Well, you know, you have to understand that you came into the market right at the very end of a very long bull run. OK, what are we uh, what are we supposed to be thinking now? Interestingly enough, I had actually painted these horizontal lines uh, on this chart like literally months ago. And I just simply said to people, um, until these levels are broken, we're nothing more than just a sideways market. Uh, it was interesting, you know, following the uh, the Bitcoin dad and uh, the testimony in front of the U.S. Uh, government, um, you know, Senate or House or whatever it was. Um, the, you know, the euphoric sentiment came back into the market very quickly, but you notice here is, um, actually, uh, yeah, here, here is the 38.2, uh, fib, uh, bounce level off of this range. And you can see the market did nothing more than come up into 38.2 and get rejected back down. Um, one might argue and you know we tell a lot of people um in our community and you, you could even argue that uh this uh, fib off of the lows if this was still a bull market the market would have come down to 38.2 consolidated and kept moving higher so we have clear evidence off this weekly chart that the 38.2 was lost off of the weeklies and then when they tried to bounce it back to 38.2 it acted as resistance and we're still waiting for this to resolve itself 
I think on balance, a very simple concept that we like to impart on people is this concept of the AB equals CD harmonic. My hunch is if we just simply go AB equals CD, my hunch is this market needs to probably come back down into this low. And you can see where 78.6 is. But the irony of it all is until this level is actually broken, we're doing nothing more than just going sideways. And, you know, you heard me earlier saying, um, you know, the rhetoric on YouTube, uh, well, not YouTube, but like Twitter and stuff is getting extremely vicious. It's getting really nasty. And it's interesting how that's happening right down against these lows. My feeling is a nice little stab into this level. Maybe over the next week or two, it might happen. That might be, Mark, our sort of capitulation. The public has basically given up. We're hearing a lot of really, really nasty stories. Um, I see it in people's conversations. Interestingly enough, on the site, I always like to keep track of this number to see whether the market is actually bottomed. And we're still hovering at pretty high numbers. I'd like to, if we ultimately can down the road on the new website, if we can get like a chart of this data. And as soon as I see a nice little W come in here, I'll know the bottom's in. Um, but, uh, you know, if we go over to something like Twitter and stuff like that, holy moly, the rhetoric is just evil um and you know i frankly speaking i really wouldn't be surprised if we actually start seeing lawsuits start flying and and this space getting really ugly it's a shame that's it's what money does to people um i've really tried to drive home a few basic messages here on the tri site this is venture capital don't risk money you can't afford to lose, right? Five. Don't risk more than 5% on any one single trade. You know, manage risk. If you're taking more uh, sizable risk than, you know, if you break that 5% rule, you better get the hell out to preserve capital. But at the same time, too, I'm still seeing a lot of people are like, oh, man, I'm totally in the dumps, Brian. This sucks. And like I said, in the public, oh, boy, I'm hearing some really, really nasty stuff on Twitter. So don't be surprised that that's the sentiment down here. But also, too, you know, understanding weekly reload zones, if we go back to the last bear, does everybody, can you see on my chart, especially YouTubers, right? This is the last, you know, Bitcoin insane rally. Do you see how if you had just been a patient accumulator through this reload zone, you would have done pretty well going forward? What do you think, YouTubers? Can you see that concept of the reload zone here playing out? Anyone? There's 72 people over there on YouTube. Can anybody see this weekly reload zone and the way the market came down and fucked around with people's heads, ultimately put in a very wide weekly W, and then started to turn back up? Thank you, Sen. It's nice to see one person over there sees it. <laughs> uh, oh, you talking, Rob, are you talking about this site uh, participation? Rob says, I don't think that indicator is accurate anymore since the school program has taken off. <laughs> I know, it's a problem with my sentiment indicator. <laughs> And again, what did I start the conversation off with here? Who can tell me over there on YouTube, if you want to make this as easy as yourself as possible, what do you want to hunt off of these weekly charts? I just gave you the, the answer. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Do you see a weekly W here? Not really. You see a weekly W here? Man, sort of. Do you see a weekly W here? Oh, boy. And if if you want to make this even easier on yourself and you want to change this to a line chart, you can even see them a lot easier. This is a, you know, in essence, we like to call this like a saucer bottom. It might take this long for this story to eventually 
bottom and turn. But do you notice that this all happened in this crazy ass reload zone? So let's fast forward to today. Here we are. We are just now basically entering the reload zone. The interesting thing here, and I, I believe this wholeheartedly, if you actually wanted to invest in Bitcoin, you should basically put yourself into a nice sort of dollar cost averaging plan and just go and do some nibbling over time, little old lady style. If you're like, okay, well, Brian, you know, I hear your message about weekly Ws. I'm just going to simply cool my jets until I see that weekly W, and it might take yeah, a good six, eight months before I do any buying. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. The only problem with this kind of approach is, you know, I'll leave it in a, Murphy's Law, this thing bottoms, it takes off like a rocket, and then you uh, turn your screen back on. Oh, yeah, I was going to buy that Bitcoin. Oh, fucking hell. I was nowhere near. So, and I did see this happen a lot with people um, that um, came to me through uh, sort of 2014 uh, through here, even took the education programs. We're like, okay, well, there's not really much going on here. I'm going to wait for the momentum and all the indicators to start turning up. And then they came back and we're like, hey, Brian, okay, is it time to buy Bitcoins now? Back up here, like as we were approaching all new highs. And they were like, oh, geez, damn. Oh, I told, yeah, I know I was going to do it. I totally forgot. So in a weird sort of way, again, thinking little old ladies kind of idea, just putting yourself on a nice, simple dollar cost averaging plan, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of this. But remember, 5% rule, don't break that number. So very simply put, and of course, you know, on the site on a daily basis, uh, well, not on a daily basis, but on a fairly regular basis, uh, we have people like Julian come in and give us their overall thoughts. What is the trend off the higher time frame? And I don't know, Julian, have you got your microphone handy? What has been the general message out of you of late about the higher time frame trend? Is it up or is it down? <laughs> he doesn't have a microphone, uh, but he is. Really oh, there he is. You tell me, sir, is the trend up or is the trend down? Seeing a lot of M's there, Brian. That's right. I mean, it's just that simple, guys. And, of course, this comes back to, well, as long as you're seeing uh, downy markets, well, our half of our job during downy markets is just to cool our jets. Great part about it, I mean, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, if Jojo wants me to continue uh, on this adventure, trying to help the public and help people learn how to build plans, learn to sort of identify what type of risk takers there are to build setups, just, you know, three unrelated reasons to, uh, to justify taking a trade. You want me to demonstrate uh, different portfolios if she wants me to. I'm beloved Jojo. I miss you and I love you, sweetheart. Um, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not in any hurry. We're sitting on a big pile of cash right now, even just from our crypto trading. I've got lots of ammunition to buy when the market's telling me to buy, but right now, at best, I'm just doing little nibbles. And that's exactly what I'm doing, guys. That is full disclosure. And as you can see, you can even see the trades. I'm not putting a lot of money into any of this shit right now. I'm just nibble, nibble, nibble. And any trades that I have been taking that are a little bit bigger in size and that fail, I'm just getting the fuck out. And I'm just simply telling people on the site, setup failed, time to walk away. So that's trader's life, guys. It's just the way it is, right? I had this trade here that I put on. You know, we've actually uh, gone to the well on this guy a few times. This last stab that I took, trade failed, walked away. But you got to define your plan and you have to define how you're going to act and you have to define everything that you're going to do ahead of time. You can't be making the decisions on the fly or that's just a potion for failure. So the point here is that um, I believe we are still very much in cleanup mode. We are, interestingly enough, and isn't it interesting, isn't it fascinating how the public is now extremely negative. Like if you look on Twitter and stuff, just 
you know, literally go onto Twitter one day and just surf all the quote unquote OGs, man, they are taking it on the chin right now. And we're getting into, well, I made more money than you made on the last run up. So I'm better than you and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Richard still isn't crying. Eh? <laughs> well, let's be nice. Okay. Um, Bitcoin price watch. Currency remains where it is. <laughs> there is going to be a lot of emotion in here. And the irony, this is the true irony of this, is it's all negative. It's all evil. It's all I'm getting wiped out. It's all I'm wrecked. And yet the, I, yeah, there you go, Matt. Thank you for mentioning that. CNBC announces Bitcoin funeral. I mean, talk about the absolute perfect scenario for a bottom when fucking CNBC comes out and starts saying, oh, yeah, this thing's toast. I mean, that's perfect. <laughs> but the point that I'm trying to make here is that I honestly believe that a lot of the negativity in this space was simply because people came to the market and they were loading up when they really shouldn't have been. But they didn't know. They were just like, hey, I was told that this was the next best thing since sliced bread. The cool part about it is, like I said, if I was an investor and I didn't have anything working in crypto, I would be taking this time now and accumulating. It is now time to actually step up and start accumulating. And yet everybody in the public is saying the exact opposite. Wrecked. Oh, it's going nowhere but down. Oh, you're going to get wiped out. Okay, so, you know, on the weekly basis, do we have a weekly W working here? No. Are we in cleanup mode after this horrendous bull? Yes. Interestingly enough, um, oh, Jesus. So they just, so Frederico says, actually, they said this is not BTC funeral. Everything is okay, and we may be close to a bottom. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I would prefer that they had said that it was a funeral. <laughs> that would make our lives a lot easier. Mm. I fully understand everybody. I may be spending the next six months maybe the next year, just doing intensive PMA sessions. I understand that this is actually probably the more important part of my job. I mean, ironically enough, it's actually pretty easy to make money uh, in a bull market. You just turn on the TV, whatever is being touted, go and buy it. The hard part of trading. The hard part of this business is going through what we're going through now and keeping your head, keeping your calm, keeping your cool, and don't let you blow up your account. Uh, altcoins, uh, somebody asked on uh, YouTube here, what's your take on altcoins? I think all coins are probably going to have to go through this washout period, very similar to what Bitcoin's going through if they haven't already. Most of them have been knocked right back down against their lows. And like I showed you, coins that have been knocked down against their lows, I'm actually in buying. Keep in mind, no sell halves on double, sell have on triple, whatever. I was selling all up top. So ironically enough, a lot of this stuff that I'm buying right now is stuff that I sold much, much higher. There are new names, and I uh, really wanted to get a position in this salt, and I put in a little W here recently. I think it got busted, though. Yeah, you can see they're just fucking around with it. So here's a really good example. If you were a trader and you were trading setups and you were trading this W, then on the break of these lows, you have to walk away. As you can see, as a relative percentage of our portfolio, I have put a grand total. I mean, look at the size of these trades, 0 0.02, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.05. That was my initial. So, you know, 5, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, basically about 10, 10.5.1 10 BTC, about 600 bucks. 
I consider that a nibble because I really like this name and I want to take a position. Uh, but if I was trading this as a trade setup, I would have to walk away on the break of this low. So there's a good example of, you know, little old lady nibble versus the trader. And you have to decide what type of trader you are. If you are the little old lady nibbles, well, you know, I don't have a problem with this. And the story that I like to use is uh, comparative story is library credits. Uh, LBC was a number, is a name that I uh, accumulated um, through the initial uh, dump, right? So uh, the coin came out. See if I can show you this. Yeah, fudge. And I always like to pull this up because it's a nice little working example. Uh, uh, all right. So uh, this is a great example of a coin that came out of the gate. It came down against uh, lows that were put in right out of the gate. Right? It had a big rally up. You know, you can see the initial, I, uh, I don't know whether it's an ICO or not, but anyway, dump, counter trend rally, then it came right back down and I said, all right, well, I'm starting, I'm willing to start taking nibbles uh, here. Uh, we, you know, here, if anything, this might be a good similarity to that uh, salt. Uh, you can see the little W here that uh, tried to come in and it was broken. And so if I had taken a leverage trade, margin trade on this, I would have to walk away here. I have no choice. But because it was little old lady nibbles um, and the markets, uh, you know, it just wasn't that much of a, 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 an order size for me. I was actually in a position where as the market worked down and put in further W's, I just simply added to the trade because I never broke that 5% rule. And interestingly enough, after and this might be exactly what our next six eight months looks like don't be shocked people this is a very realistic possibility and remember i'm not going anywhere i will be here six months eight months a year two years five years from now i've been at this for 30 years right a year or two in my mind is like a drop in the bucket so yeah we did a little bit of a nibble like off of here and then, uh, if I'm not mistaken, actually, I even think we even bought some up here, like reload zones, wicks and tails. Um, I bought a little bit more, I think, off of this uh, move down in here. And ironically enough, after all of this, our average cost uh, for the position turned out to be somewhere in this area here. And you can go and look up on the site. We should have all the old references and stuff. If you really need this information, I'll be more than happy to give it to you. It's no big deal. And, of course, on this rally, that's when we started selling halves on doubles, blah, 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 blah. So the point of the matter here is this could very easily be our future in a lot of these altcoins. The interesting thing here is as we were going down here, I have to look at this situation from the exact opposite perspective, right? I like down markets. I like to buy down markets. Um, and when the public gets all frivolous and, and, and nutso and stuff, right, that's where I have my open orders to sell halves on doubles, et cetera, working. And you can see I had to be very patient and very disciplined, and I made my money. So could we see the similar sort of situation in that salt right now? Sure. Wouldn't surprise me one bit. Um, so uh, there was the initial dump. There was the counter trend rally. There was the test of the lows. You can see they took it to new lows. It's looking very similar. Um, and I'm more than happy to, uh, you know, I've done my initial nibbles, so I don't think I'm going to do any more nibbling for now. <gasps> I've got on a nice little position. At this point now, I'm just going to simply be patient, and I'm just going to wait for a nice W to come in. And it might take some time. I'm not in any hurry whatsoever. Uh, and if I have to sit here for the next six, eight months and just let this thing simmer, so be it. I'm perfectly comfortable with that 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 approach. It's all about risk management. 
and it's all about me trying to buy against lows. You know, I thought it was interesting just in that Doge conference last night. Um, they were even saying, you know what, uh, you know, just get ready next time Doge uh, 10Xs, 20Xs uh, will be in there uh, selling some more. So ironically enough, even these people that uh, don't fancy themselves as technicians and don't fancy themselves as traders, they understand that when the markets go zooming up, they're going to be selling. Be really interesting just to take a look at Doge and just see what it looks like. So if anything, probably what we're having here is, uh, you know, buy it. Well, I guess not really buy on the rumor. I guess that Dogecon Vancouver didn't really entice a heck of a lot of new buying. eh? <laughs> Everybody here should look at this chart and go, holy shit, I see exactly where the bottom is. It's right there, right? And if we change this to a weekly chart, hopefully everybody can see the weekly W. Let's see if we change this to a line, maybe you'll see a little better. And you see the weekly W down here? Right, right off of that level there. Zip, zip, zip. This one is kind of tough because the last weekly W was off of that level. A little bit difficult. Uh, but wow, what a beautiful example of weekly W. So... Yeah, you're absolutely right, Jonas. Uh, this thing's a bit expensive to be thinking about buying it right now. Oh, I got tons of Doge on the books. And remember, if I sell half on a double, what is my risk? What is my cost basis uh, for the rest of the coins? Do I care? Yeah. I mean, really, a guy like me, I don't care because I want to accumulate the shit out of this stuff. I suppose one could argue, you know, a uh, reload zone kind of concept. I really wouldn't have a problem if people were nibbling away down here. It really isn't that big of a deal. Um, I often find that the line in the sand will ultimately uh, mark the bottom. And notice how the line in the sand is also this notch. So, you know, for whatever whatever it's worth, probably this thing's going to come down, put in some sort of bottom like that if this is actually the low. And then you'll see something like that develop. You want to wait for that W uh, through the reload zone? It's not a bad idea. Um, but there's no hurry here whatsoever right now to go and buy this thing. All right. So uh, everybody has a basic message of what the overall trend in Bitcoin is. There's no, there's no sugar coating this, guys. You know, higher low or lower highs and lower lows is a bear market. It's just the way it is. If you did buy up here and you, um, yeah, well, there is one moon, Kevin. I can show you. In fact, and it's so funny because everybody last night was going to them. Hey, look at the moon. Look at the moon, right? And I was like, I was like looking up in the sky and going, okay, where is it? Where is it? Where's the moon? <laughs> and they're going, no, you idiot, <laughs> right here in front of you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to do this. So stupid with this technology stuff. Hey, right? there's the moon there. <laughs> and it was so funny. They're like wheeling this thing around downtown Vancouver and they were going into like parking garages and stuff like this. Cause at one point we were on the top floor of a parking garage just blasting the music all over uh, downtown Vancouver. So uh, they were trying to like wheel it through the parking garage and the levels and, they, and like Alex was having to pick the damn thing up and turn it on its side and stuff. It was remarkable. But anyway, um, the point here is that um, cool in our jets. If you, if you have to take some time and just let the dust settle here, so be it. It's imperative, guys, that if this is risk capital, great. You know, it's working in the market. It's just the way it is. But, you know, if you have rent, if you have bills, and I can see, I can even see right now, guys like Mike, you happen to have your camera on right now. You're just going, fuck, I can't, I got to deal with like six months of this shit. <laughs> I can see it in your face. I, you know, I mean, it's all good, but you all have to realize this is the way markets work. 
you know, markets go up, make damn sure to pay yourself when markets go up, markets go down. And when markets go down and everybody and their brother is shitting their pants and, you know, just sucking wind, ironically enough, that's actually when we have to go in and step in on the buy side. You don't have to go and shoot your uh, wad, the whole whack. You want a dollar cost average? You want a nanny nibble? Whatever the hell you want to call it. But ironically enough, now is actually a time when you have to actually step in on the buy side. Okay. Um, I think I wanted to just take a quick moment and talk a little bit about what I'm seeing here in the short term. Um, where should we start? I think, you know, like I had on these weekly charts, I had drawn A, B equals C, D. I had put out tweets like this recently suggesting that, uh, and this tweet I did um, through the last sort of institutional moving average cycle here. You want to make it really simple on yourself. And when this is a concept that we cover in the level two program, uh, but you want to make it really simple for yourself to always be trading with the institutional bias, whatever way that they are seeing the market, just throw on your charts, the nine EMA and the 18 period EMA. That's in essence, or you want to make yourself make life really easy for you. Um, good people like Sam have actually created uh, scripts on TradingView, institutional bias, where it's just one indicator. And it actually just changes the background color so that you always know what sort of how the institutions are thinking. So the point of the matter here is we can clearly see when the uh, moving average is turned up, tags of the fast moving average were actually your sort of buying windows. Then when the bias rolled over, tags of the moving averages were actually selling windows. And you can see that we just went through one of those and we resolved to the downside and broke to new lows. Their bias is still down, just like Julian said earlier. Trend, unfortunately, is still down. Um, I'm a little concerned that, especially, like I said, with what I've what I've seen out of sort of the Twitterverse and what some of the feedback that I'm getting from some basic site members um, about their account performance and you know what should I be thinking. Um, I'm wondering whether we're getting to the point where people are capitulating, they are panicking, they are dumping, they are freaking out, and yet this might be setting a trap. Now, why would I say that? First and foremost, can everybody see how RSI came down here and actually started forming Ws here and then turning back up? We're actually, this is the first time in about a month and a half that we actually have the RSI study not making a lower low, even though price itself did make a lower low. This isn't a confirmed divergence. You know, if Julian was here and giving us his presentation, he would probably be suggesting to us that we have to wait for these kind of trend line breakouts on RSI to resolve in earnest. And really, I think we can see very clearly now if this level here on RSI is taken out, not only does it confirm a divergence in price, but it will actually give us structure on the other side of uh, this trend line and confirm this bullish divergence. So that's encouraging. That's a good sign. As well, too, remember, guys, that we haven't broken this trading range yet. We're at the very bottom of it, and people are panicking, and they're freaking out, and the sentiment is extremely negative. But we haven't broken this trading channel yet. Um, I also noticed, too, uh, let's see where I can find it. <sighs> oh, boy. Um. We actually had a couple uh, bearish objectives that needed to be hit, but I didn't think that they were cleanly hit. I don't think that was it. I think maybe it was off OKCoin. Okay uh, where the hell is it? One of these charts. 
One of these charts is not like the other. Did I get rid of it? I hope not. Maybe I see you. Hey, there we are. Okay. Uh, we had... Um, hmm. Well, I can't seem to find it. But anyway, uh, we did have a... Um, uh, one uh, bearish bot objective here. Also, too, I find it interesting. You know, we uh, Thomas was telling us, you know, last week he's seeing real relevance in uh, OK Coin here, and we sort of talked a little bit about this. This isn't the chart that I wanted to show you, though. I think maybe it was this one. That I didn't really think that they could mark the bottom in this OK Coin market until they actually hit the reset button here Let's see if i can zoom out yeah there it is so uh if we go and say like look at like um, a daily chart i think on ok coin uh well this is a four hour maybe we can see it here yeah on OKCoin, okay uh, remember, you liquidate me and I liquidate myself uh, conversation. Um, that was this event right here. Market dumped, and then they halted trading. Um, and then they instantly brought trading back at this level here. So I'm wondering whether we actually have to work our way back down to that level. We also have some pretty important horizontal support and resistance levels in this area as well. Uh, and I'm wondering whether that's that's what's actually going on in the market right now. If we actually zoom out uh, and we look at the whole picture, you can see that we're just sort of slowly stair-stepping our way down into this level. And, you know, we always talk about look left. If we enter, you know, into these big candles, where is key support here? Well, it's going to be a key support, obviously, off of that halt level. And then, you know, wicks and tails like to Eden. And I love candle body lows as trade location. So put it all together. You can see how close we are coming to that magic level. But what I find really interesting about this is, you notice that when we look at all of these various time frames, I'm seeing a lot of bullish divergences coming in on these indicators. So uh, you can see that we have a potential weekly divergence. We made new weekly low, but price has not. You can see the daily divergence. Now we have to be careful here because this might coil and we might break down. So it hasn't really confirmed its next leg yet. We did have a little bit of a divergence come in through this move here. Uh, as we just showed you a moment ago, the four-hour chart has this bigger divergence, but it also has this smaller divergence working. You can see the current candle is going to uh, actually confirm that smaller divergence um, if it prints where we are now. On the hourly basis, holy moly, this is a massive bullish divergence. And so, you know, just out of curiosity for the YouTubers, um, what are we supposed to be thinking? Maybe we are a bear, and that's fine. Rawr, I'm a bear. But what are we supposed to be thinking if we see a confirmed bullish divergence come in? If I'm a bear and I see a confirmed bullish divergence come in, I should do what? Thank you, Rob. Let's see if anybody in the YouTube audience knows this. And I see, Sen, you're playing both angles again here today, eh? <laughs> oh, you're only going to laugh over there, eh? <laughs> okay, fine. My mic, since you've got your camera on, I will ask you, what are we supposed to do? If we see a, uh, a confirmed bullish divergence, we're bearish. Well, we think Bitcoin's going down. But what are we supposed to be thinking if we see this bullish divergence in price? Any ideas? Well, it's close. Cool your jets. Right? If you're a bear, 
you just got to wait for this divergence to play itself out. What do you think, guys? Was there a little bit of buying interest coming in on this candle? It looks like it to me. So I'm a little worried down at the bottom of the weekly range. Absolutely horrendous public sentiment. Um, I also noticed, too, something very cheeky. Remember Thomas was talking, to, and it's great that we have Thomas around because he loves trading OK coins so much. He really understands the nuances of this exchange. But do you guys remember uh, Thomas was saying that the uh, the quarterly contract just shifted into the two-week contract, and then it shifts into the one-week contract, and then that formally gets delivered? I noticed here when I look at my OKCoin OK spreads, hello, what's going on down here? They're in backwardization, but they're actually trying to bottom here. Again, is this the kind of anecdotal evidence that we want to see if we're thinking about shorting? No, we want to hunt these M's. So if we see like a little W, and I don't know where this is going to play itself out by the end of today, um, but I, you know, I got to let this play itself out as well. Ideally, we'd like to see a nice little uh, M come in here if we're a bear, and then of course that implies that the forwards are suggesting that we have to can, you know head down more. So, you know, divergences on the charts. Uh, at the bottom of uh, weekly trading range, this is the one I wanted to show you. And I thought this was interesting. Notice that in Japanese yen terms, this AB equals CD target was never hit. And notice through this event, they finally hit that AB equals CD target. Another sort of piece of anecdotal evidence that, hey, is this really a good time for us to get ridiculously bearish? I don't know. Also interesting too, look how close that low was. All right? Look at that. I mean, that's crazy. So what do you think, guys? If we have bullish divergences coming in here off of key tests of horizontal support and resistance levels, is this really where we want to get too bearish? I don't think so. I mean, if we're a bear, we want to be hunting M's. We want to be hunting reload short zones, right? Shorting these things up top through here. I don't know whether it's such a good idea to be getting too bearish right here. This to me sound. This has got trap written fucking all over it. So you know, be careful, everyone. Please don't get sucked into the emotion of this game. Didn't what are you saying there, Sen? Didn't T I make new lows? I'm not quite sure what the question is. Uh, it doesn't look like this Japanese market made a new low. I guess the the uh, I I don't see it, but maybe um, yeah. And interesting, look how you know on the hourly. Actually, that was a four hour chart, right? Who can tell me what is the name of this pattern on the four hour chart? Oh, actually, it isn't. That sucks. That's too bad. I was kind of hoping it was. But there is that test. Doink doink doink. Woo! Get me the fuck out of there. Um. On the daily charts, look how this is going to be painted as nothing more than a big arami. And also, too, notice we also have that potential bullish divergence stuff happening here in RSI. Finally. I've been waiting forever for these kind of divergences to come in. But we'll see how this goes. I mean, it's not confirmed yet. Kind of like the, uh, the other <laughs> markets that we showed you. Probably best to wait for these kind of downtrend line moves to be resolved. And I think that's probably your pivot there. If we break back above here, then this thing's back in rally mode. And considering how bearish the sentiment is, that wouldn't surprise me one bit whatsoever. Um, do I have enough of a justification to go and actually pull the trigger on the long side? No, I don't. Uh, I'd like to see, you know, I think we have location against these lows. Um, I'd like to see um, a nice confirmed divergence. 
Um, and, uh, and then we can start hunting longs. So like on OKCoin, for example, I could start thinking about hunting longs off the uh, hourly, maybe 15 minute, if we get a nice little W that comes in here uh, and confirms, I can actually start thinking about hunting longs. My hunch is though, I think this is like a short squeeze. I wouldn't be surprised if we actually flag out here and there's another leg higher just to really break the hearts of the bears. That wouldn't surprise me one bit. And it'd be also interesting too, to see whether we actually have any news driving uh, this price action. Does anybody know if there's any news been put out on any of this? Oops, uh, let's line that up correctly. There we go. Zen, you seeing anything? Okay, um, hopefully you have a pretty good idea of what I'm seeing in the market right now. Uh, I think it's a horrible short trade location. Uh, Bitmain is getting close to 51%, some Japanese FUD. Okay, it might be interesting tomorrow to get uh, a news update on, on that. Um, I, you know, any way you shake it, I think that um, altcoins, they're going to be going through um, a troughing period here. That's, that's the easiest way to, to paint this. What I have noticed is that, you know, like names like Feather, actually, oh yeah, this is Feather. Um, they, they had like sort of bump ups, and we see this a lot in this space where you'll get bump ups, nice little rallies. And of course, anybody who's like sharpshooting trading plans, I think on the site, we were looking at like four hour charts, just ridiculous little bottoms here. You, I think that this was actually a manufactured double trade. Um, and now what they've done is they've just built in some wiggle room for this asset to go back and forth. And I'm seeing a lot of that right now. Um, you know, this RLC, it sort of had its big bump up here, and now the, all they're doing is they're just bringing it back down. And I think you're going to see a lot of this, just choppy chop, choppy chop, just driving you crazy, holy boring, right? And you can't push a chain, right? The whole point of us being invested in these kind of names, ideally, right, is that we're long off the bottom end of the range. If you can get doubles off on these spikes, so be it. Uh, but try, try really hard not to be buying, you know, after the big burst. It's just, it's, it's just asking for trouble, especially in this kind of market right now, guys. Okay. Um, and maybe, uh, let's just take a quick boo at, uh, storage, for example. Let's see what we did here. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> I had a bunch of buy orders on this thing that I was working. Hopefully everybody can see um, the logic. This is, looks to me like a e Ian level. And, you know, for these altcoins, if you want to change your reload zones to 88.6, uh, or you want to add that level as a, uh, a reload zone level, I'm okay with that. That's exactly what that trade was, right? Maybe it's a little bit higher I got in. Might have also been hunting a gap here. Let's see, where did I buy? Um, boom. 7469. That was right in this tail. Uh, let's see here. All right, my hunch is there was probably a cheeky little gap right here from Send Script. Seven, four, six, nine. Well, it looks like it's somewhere in this area. Right against this low here, right against that tail, that's where uh, we got filled. Hopefully everybody can see the basic logic here, right? Trying to buy against the bottom end of ranges. 
and I'm in no hurry whatsoever here. Just backing up the truck. Beep, beep, beep. Taking delivery. I could even really, I could even see a little bit of probing down into these areas here. Wouldn't surprise me one bit. Um, I think I'll probably temper my enthusiasm to buy much more for the time being. I'd like to see some structure come in here. Uh, maybe a nice W or something along those lines, and I might add to it. But I think I've, I've filled my basket there. <sighs> All right, let's uh, pop on over to, uh, well, actually, I suppose we can do it through. Hey, there's Einstein. Okay, so I do see Alexander just sent us a message. He was here a bit. Uh, I remember talking about the importance of profit ta uh, profit taking in the daily breeze, and that I had the feeling that a lot of people who were in pain had just never realized their paper profits. That's definitely realistic, Alexander. I see that a lot. I had a lot of people that we teach in the program. Um, oh, look at that! I'm back to Seward again. Yeah, gee whiz. <laughs> Crazy WordPress. I mean, nuts. Um, a lot of people in the program, that's half their problem in their trading plan is they just they don't know when to take profits. I really like that sell half on a double uh, strategy. It sort of prevents me from having to think too much. Remember, when you think, that it injects emotion. It also injects discretion. And those are the kind of things that kill most new people to trading, right? Greed takes over. Man, 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 right? I'm going to get rich. I'm going to buy my Lambos. And they end up never taking profits. So absolutely, Alexander. I can completely understand that. Okay, uh, maybe let's uh, take a look from here. Uh, hi, team. Julian mentioned in a recent DB that Seward had tested numerous indicators and RSI delivered the best results. Can you please elaborate? How is it tested? What circumstances? Um, Seward does a lot of machine learning. And so Seward will uh, basically uh, build the computer and uh, cross-reference, uh, you know, and he'll, he'll mine like, like you know, a thousand different coins or you know, 5,000 different stocks. And just as a predictor, if RSI is pointing up, which way did price go the next day? Did it go up? Did it go down? Um, and from that very basic uh, machine learning uh, module, uh, RSI was the most accurate predictor of future price movements. I personally would rather see an injection of uh, market structure in the RSI indicator. And, you know, in the level one program, we teach the Williams percentage R indicator as a momentum oscillator. And then I use a bastardization of the Williams percentage R, which is, you know, RSI is also a momentum, a price momentum oscillator. Um, we're really looking for those Ws and the moving average crosses uh, of the indicator. And usually when the indicator crosses a moving average, it, it has a W working or an M. Um, and so uh, specifically, uh, Seward's study was just simply about the predictive nature of RSI. And of course, uh, once we get the new website up and running, uh, and it should be along shortly, um, Seward's going to have tons of this kind of stuff for you to chew on. As well, too, we asked uh, Julian to actually put together a module of how he uses RSI and uh, trade setups based on his RSI modeling. Um, and that should be coming down the pike as well. So if anything, uh, Frank, uh, give Julian a poke. Hey, when's that RSI module coming? <laughs> uh, hi, Brian. A reliable uh, source of mine just mentioned we are making a Wyckoff formation. Don't recall hearing that name before. Can you please explain? Yeah, I think I seem to remember we did uh, pull up that chart and show you what the Wyckoff process kind of looks like. Uh, and I would agree with that, in essence, uh, as a... You know, the worst part about for Bitcoin and crypto is people are, you know, relatively new people to crypto right now are looking at this and going, oh, this is it's going off the board. It's going to zero. And there's, you know, there's guys that on the Internet that aren't doing any favors. 
There's one gentleman in particular. Um, I won't give him his specific reference. Uh, I will give his initials, PB. So, you know, try and do your due diligence off of that. And he was notoriously wrong for calling tops on Bitcoin when it was rallying up. And now he's in there basically saying everything's going to zero. And he's got a lot of people on Twitter just freaking out right now, which I don't think is doing the community any favors whatsoever. Um, I believe that this is extremely um, Wyckoffian. <laughs> Can we say that? Wyckoffian? <laughs> And we have to understand that to get the public to panic dump into institutional buy orders where institutions are likely to buy, what do they have to do? What do they have to get you thinking? They have to get you panicking. They have to get you selling. They have to get the public thinking that it's the end of the world. <laughs> Wycovian? <laughs> we are Wycovian by nature, but I think I even have that on here. Okay, don't I have it? It's somewhere in here. Uh, here it is. The Wyckoff model. This is just capitalism 101. Very, very simple stuff. And as we've sort of said before, you want to make your life easier, just wait for the market to put in these Ws. Wait for the market to put in these Ms, right? And just act appropriately. So we look at Bitcoin price, and yeah, this does look very Wyckovian. And you notice that the previous breakout was from all the way down here. Do we have to come back down and check these levels? It could happen, like we showed you. You know, this was the last cycle. You can see the Wyckovian here, right? Come back down, check the original breakout, put in a bottom, away we go. And I think the smart money is doing exactly the same thing. The worst part about this, guys, I'll say this again. I said it at the beginning of the show. I'll say it again. We were all sitting here less than a year ago talking about Bitcoin. You know, here is, uh, where is, uh, here's July, here's June, right? Bitcoin's two, $3,000. Maybe all they have to do is run it up to the top, bring it right back down to two, $3,000, and that's hit the reset button, and it's all done in one year. Boom. And then we start the process of putting the bottom in again and going to rinse and repeat. So, yeah, I totally agree. This is very Wycovian. Uh, okay, BLK, BTC. All right, let's see what we got here. BLK, BTC. If I was a nanny, I would have no problem doing a nibble. You want to wait for this little W to confirm? Maybe get a moving average cross to help you confirm that the trend has indeed turned up? Oh, well, that's not bad. You can see how the market tried to W here, rallied and failed. If you were trading setups, margin, leverage, whatever, and you had taken this W, then you got to just walk away and say, whoops, I was wrong. Get me the hell out. That's a trader's life. Does anybody know just offhand? What is the typical uh, percentage of trades that a CME floor trader will take that they turn into winning trades? Let's see if the YouTubers even know this number. And it's not high. It's actually pretty darn low. Well, I'd be a little higher than that, Cole. Do any of the YouTubers know? I'm a CME floor trader. I'm going to take this trade, and I expect it to work X percent of the time. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. <laughs> Matt! You got the answer. Way to go. No, well, it's a little better than that, Marius. 55%. They're looking for that 5% edge. So that means they're going to get stopped out how often? If they're looking to be right 55%, that means they're looking to get stopped out how much? It's a big number. Hundred percent right, fifty-five percent of the time. I like it, Kevin. Way to go! 
Anyway, they're looking to get stopped out a good 40, 45% of the time, guys. That is brutal reality. It's just when they are right, what has to happen? And I can see I've been ranting away here. The uh, the uh, YouTube participation has trailed off appreciably here. <laughs> Gets paid. Thank you, Kevin. So, you know, you can see the little W that came in here. And if you had taken this, this is what's called getting paid. And, of course, you can't just buy and hold. When this freaking thing runs up, you got to fucking ring the register. It's just that simple. This W came in, not really a clean W, pretty wide, pretty sloppy. This W came in, oh, it was working, and then pff, stopped out. So, you know, this is why I build the little old lady nannies, uh, nanny nibbles portfolio strategy, is that there's some people that just can, simply can't handle getting stopped out that much of the time. But if you're a trader and you come here, Brian, I want to, I want to be a trader, I want to be active, I want to rock this thing. Well, that means you got to you got to be comfortable with getting stopped out. It's just it's just a trader's life. And then when you are right, you got to make sure to hold on to that position to get paid relative to the amount of risk that you're taking on losing trades. So as I had started off, nanny nibbles, throw one two percent of your portfolio at this thing. I had no problem with that whatsoever. Do I have a pound the table and even set up here to trade? No, there's nothing here yet. I do like the idea that we've got divergences building, and you can see a nice little rally confirming this W is probably going to confirm that MACD div. You can see Willie's nice and stupid. That's always a bonus. And you can see on balance, even though prices come down here, money is not really leaving the space. So what does that mean? To me, that means that, well, they're just working the market down so they can do some more buying off of the levels that they were most in, they were interested originally in. Now, there's no guarantees in this space, everybody. Everybody has to understand that. And a lot of names that you take shots of, off of, uh, previous lows, reload zones, etc., they go through those lows. And if you were playing, again, margin, leverage, whatever, and you were playing reload mm -hmm. zone and it broke the bottom of the range, you got to get out. Remember, Brian does little old lady nanny nibbles, think uh, library credits. If I don't put too much into this name here, well, I can always go and buy a little bit more if it comes down to here or a little bit. Well, I suppose we don't want it to go negative. Uh, anywhere along here. And then, of course, when the W does actually come in, well, that's when I want to load up. Again, not allowed to break that 5% rule ever. So, not a bad nibble name, trade location, eh, it's acceptable. Uh, you're basically hunting against the low end of the range. But because there aren't really, you know, you, everybody hopefully can see this beautiful double bottom right here. This is ideally what you want to see. And the moving average is crossing bullishly, yada, 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 right? Probably if we change that to a weekly chart, you'll see that stand out. Yep, there it is. Can everybody see the weekly W? Tell you guys, you want to make this easy on yourself, just hunt those weekly Ws. All right, uh, next in crypto, what's this? Is crypto in the camp with other commodities so it might be bearish for many years? Well, and this is the $64,000 question here, Joe. Uh, is your, a, uh, your cryptocurrency a, a store of value story, if that's the case? Yeah, it could be. Uh, the good part about this space, though, is that these all these uh, proof-of-work coins, they have built-in inflation. They call it deflation, but I actually I call it inflation because the price of the coin has to rise over time. That really doesn't have any choice. So if you're buying POW coins, my feeling is, like I said, with Goldman Sachs, three to five year time horizon, you could have bought the top of a lot of these POW coins and you'll still make money down the road if you just hold on to them. 
Um, I know I completely understand. A lot of you are like, yeah, but, you know, Brian, I don't want to be sitting just on dead money for the next, you know, five years. Well, uh, that's a decision you're going to have to make. Uh, as I said to you, everybody here before, you know, especially with demonstrating this portfolio, I want to be long crypto. I, uh, the whole purpose of this was to accumulate crypto. So I don't have a problem sitting on this stuff for a while. But the flip side of this question is, and really I think this is where the Ethereums of the world come in, is can crypto morph itself into a growth story? And actually some of the presentations that I saw over the weekend, I got to tell you, it's pretty damn impressive stuff. Um, and I believe that crypto will be part of this next growth story. That's me. Um, obviously, the coins themselves, we have to see them as utilities. They actually do some sort of job. Uh, if we can get to that point and you can fundamentally, well, yeah, this the coin is used for this or the token is used for this, like our video game analogy, right? And then more people who play the video game, obviously, the more widespread the distribution of the, the token the higher the price has to be. And it's interesting, the presentation that I saw yesterday, they even build algos into their uh, platform so that if their coin token does start going up in value, the relative value of the items found in the game actually stays the same. So there's like an algos built into these to anticipate uh, movements up and down in the, in the actual currency value itself. So my answer to this is that is the $64,000 question. And I believe that it's really a question of is your token a store of value or is your token a utility? Uh, can we ask Mr. Bear to talk a little bit about the reasons he's not using Kendall Wicks and Tails in his TA? Well, I think he uses the wicks and tails, but he likes to use the candle bodies for trade location. And, you know, we kind of showed you this earlier. Hopefully, every, and, I, you know, maybe tomorrow in tomorrow's broadcast, I'll have him speak specifically to this. But can you see how clearly defined these uh, candle bodies? This has changed to a clothesline basis. Mm -hmm. Can you see how clearly defined this M is here? So, you know, we can change to wicks and tails. And we see that this looks just up and down like a whore's drawers. But you notice the close here, you could have simply put your open order at this closing le bar level there. And you see on this candle, it had a little bit of a wick. Ding, 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 ding. He gets his fill. And now he's short. So, uh, and you probably heard from Brian before talk about candle body highs and lows. If we change this to a line chart, what this really is saying is this is the key pivot point right there where the close of those bodies are. Um, as I said, I'll, uh, I'll ask uh, Thomas to uh, help uh, explain his thinking a little bit more for you as well. Got a $2 entry filled. Please critique this options play. All right, Wayne, what you got here? All right, we got Estee Larder. Uh, this is a daily price chart. Geez, this thing sure has come an awful long way. Uh, that is just one year. Wow. Holy moly. So 50% level sitting at 125.87. Uh, the 130 strike, and this is, I uh, don't know what expiry month you're looking at. Um, I'm not quite sure what it's expiring month. I'm going to assume, Wayne, that you bought at least six months of time. So right now it is, uh, how the hell do you read this? I think the last trade's 235, down 40 cents. I'm not quite sure what the eight stands for. Dollar ninety five bid, 250 offered. So uh, at the 50% level, the 130 strike should have uh, $4.13 of intrinsic value. Good job. So if you can uh, get an option with at least six months of time, 
um, that's trading at less than what two dollars and six cents rock and roll and I think technically this makes sense you can see uh, there's a huge hole in the charts all the way down here a gap look at the size of that eh? <laughs> but 50% uh, level 38.2 is probably going to be the market testing these lows here somewhere in this area here you can see the top of value is this notch right here so and what this is probably going to do is make like a massive head and shoulders fractal so on the dump down into here you're going to have to try and buy maybe two or three of these wayne um and maybe look to sell two of them at this uh, four dollar level get all your original money back nice little uh, chunk of profit in your pocket and then just ride the free one and that third one you know if this thing just completely falls out of bed you can see there's a big old gap all the way down here at 87. so if the market completely falls out of bed that one option might be worth like four or five thousand dollars um and so you know if you do three sell two at four then uh you've thrown six into the trade you take eight out so two on six is a nice 30 percent return on your in entire investment and then like i said if this thing does tank down into these crazy ass levels down here then you've totally knocked the cover off the ball so not bad wayne perfectly fine i think you're thinking in a excellent direction and of course that doesn't surprise me uh, coming from you. Uh, XSN BTC on Cryptopia. Uh, all right. XSN on Cryptopia. Whoops. Can't work that way. Okay, let's see what we got here. Doop a doop a doo, boop a doo, choop a doo, snoo be coo, and boom. Well, you know, again, and this is the good part. I like, you know, when I talk to you guys, uh, I don't have many people come to me and say, hey, Brian, what do you think of this uh, name up here? Because <laughs> you know, instantly I'm just going to go, uh, forget it. Wayne really knows the cosmetic sector, uh, does he? Does he work in that field? Um, I would, you know, highly suggest to everybody just start with the most basic premise, reload zones, right? Boom, 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 boom. Uh, I think it's not, you know, working over the past few years in crypto, I don't think it's a bad idea whatsoever if you want to add the 88.6 uh, fib to, um, I'll put it here. To your reload zone concept, I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. Um, so there's eighty-eight point six. You know, we I suppose we could just nibble, right? Now that we get down into these levels down in here, but that's all you're gonna do. That's as far as you're gonna. Hey, James, dude, where you been? Hey, buddy, are you living in Puerto Rico now? Maybe. <laughs> I have really good internet now. Oh, cool. Hey, look at that. What a handsome guy. <laughs> right on, dude. I was wondering where you were. Oh, good to see you, bud. I'll send you pictures later. Cool. All right. Hopefully that we've got pants on. <laughs> <laughs> um, could you nibble in this zone? Sure. You know, if anything, here is a great testament. You know, Brian, I appreciate reload zones. I appreciate location. I'd really like to see, you know, a little bit more anecdotal reasons to justify me risking my hard-earned money. How about, can I see at least a divergence in momentum? All right, well, we've got that. So that's coming in. It looks like that was basically confirmed down in here. Uh, you can see Willie got nice and stupid. We always like that. A lot of chop, and if anything, you know, if this was a normal altcoin market uh, without all the fluff, right, probably the market would have launched through this window. But, you know, given um, the blow-off top in Bitcoin, the end of the fear cycle, all that kind of stuff, 
Um, it doesn't surprise me that this was this was the rally. Jeez, didn't really translate into much. Um, so now you're sitting there going, okay, well, I did buy some down in here. I took the railroad tracks. If you were trading setups and, you know, you, let's say you did this railroad tracks, sadly, and this is like my OMG that I bought recently. If you take the railroad tracks setup kind of like, well, there's some structure. That was a fractal. You got stopped out here. If you're taking like leverage trades, you just did. It's, it's trader's life. That's the way it goes. Um, and you're just simply waiting for the next W to, to consider pulling the trigger. A uh, little concerned that the internals are kind of rolling over here. I don't see any uh, divergence in MACD anymore. There's a little bit of one work trying to work, I guess. Uh, I'd like to see a nice W come in here before I really start believing this thing's really turned in earnest. Love the location. Awesome location. Nibble worthy? Absolutely. Pound the table? Nope. Uh, you're just going to have to cool your jets. And, you know, uh, when in doubt and you're thinking, okay, what could this possibly look like? We should all remember library credits. Right? Maybe this thing has to come and put in some sort of, you know, sauce or bottom like this. Totally realistic. Do I expect these highs to be taken out down the road? Absolutely. And that's the irony of it all, guys, is that. I don't see any reason whatsoever in the next not so stupid market that we get into that a name like this actually trades up to levels up here. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Not one bit. So the irony of it all is can you see, you know, I think probably I'm going to leave the video off at this because I do have to get going for Liam. This to me looks like one of these scenarios. There is no right or wrong way to read this line. However you read this line, it's correct. No doubt about it. And there are two very unique ways to read this line. I would look at a name like this, and I would say, given the amount of potential return down the road, that it is totally fine in my idea, in my mind, to simply go and risk a dollar on a name like this. That takes us basically to zero there. For the anticipation that we might get a reward like that. And if only, I don't know, and when I, I, let's just see hypothetically what is this um, risk reward. So that's something in the neighborhood of 14x, uh, right? 14 times your money there. And ironically enough, in crypto, 10x moves, nothing at all whatsoever out of the ordinary. Is it worth it for a guy like me to go and throw a dollar at this thing? Little old lady, nanny nibbles, right? Very low percentage of my portfolio. And have to sit on this thing for a year or so in the anticipation that this is what I'm going to realize down the road? Fucking A. I'll do that every day of the week. I don't have a problem with that. But I do understand there are a lot of people that are going to read this as, well, this thing just sucks. It's a piece of shit. It's going off the board. I'm not going to touch it with a 10-foot pole. That's fine. But just understand that a guy like me, when I look at a name like this, I read opportunity is now here. Ironically enough, when I look at a chart, when it's up here, this is where I read opportunity is nowhere. Very different uh, way of looking at the market. And you all need to understand that institutions do not buy up markets institutions buy down markets now i don't know what the fundamental story of this thing is and am i, am I even looking at the right damn thing probably not uh xsn 
Oh, I'm probably not even looking at the right fucking thing. Anyway, <laughs> we give a, a complete story of something that nobody's even the slightest bit interested in. How the hell did I get that? But I would make the argument that technically, this looks very attractive. You want to go and do your due diligence? Kick the tires? Do these things have a bazillion uh, coins outstanding? Do they have just a few coins outstanding? Let's see how many coins they got out. 20 million! Fuck, we should be all over this fucking thing. So, you know, actually there's a nice freebie. And you guys on, on YouTube, there's a total freebie for you. This thing's an easy 10x if they ever get their act together. Merry fucking Christmas. I'm not saying it's going to happen today. Not Pat, No guarantees whatsoever. But if I'm a risk taker and I'm looking at the market, this is definitely something I got to be interested in. That's kind of, uh, thank you for asking for that. We got off on a tangent. I think I'm going to save that for later, but let's go look at the actual name you wanted me to look at. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. XSN. What the hell is SXSN? How did I get so, oh, I thought I SSPSN. There it is. All right, let's see what he's got. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Oh. All right, now. <laughs> Looking at this, what do you think Brian is going to say <laughs> reading this? <laughs> Somebody on the Uper, hey, really? <laughs> Let's maybe uh, rephrase that. <laughs> Anybody over on YouTube, what, how do you think Brian is going to read this line when I look at an asset that looks like this? <laughs> that's good all right maybe let's rephrase this what are we supposed to think if we ever see oops if we ever see the market smiling at you youtubers there's still 50 of you over there very good mike all uh, right I like the buy high, sell higher premise, Brian, when you're thinking about buying, say, this move down here, up, down, and then up. So you're going to buy high, and you're going to look to sell higher. Does that make sense, Brian? When you get to the point where you look at the chart and you see that the low is here and the high is here, what do you think I'm going to suggest that you do? Why not draw a reload zone? And you notice that 61.8 is basically into these tails, that tail there, that tail there. 78.6 is a revisit of this original candle body low. And then finally, 88.6 is coming right into that tail. Now, you have to be careful on these initial um, um, wicks and tails on a site like Coinigy because that might be a, just an erroneous print. Uh, but there is no way in the world I could possibly recommend anybody go in and buy this here. Way, way, way too dangerous. And especially things like Nanny Nibbles. That's just ridiculous. All right, Mike, uh, did you enjoy the presentation today? Did you think you got any value out of what we talked about? That's really why I'm doing this. And I even gave you a specific uh, call out to you, right? <laughs> so uh, whoever asked about this, who asked about this? Uh, does it say Jerika? I don't know whether I'm pronouncing that correctly or not. If I'm not, I apologize. Um, I can't, I, I can't endorse, you know, especially like little old lady talking to the public and stuff. Oh yeah, buy this and you'll make money. I cannot endorse. If anything, this is kind of like going in and buying Bitcoin at like 16, 17, $18,000. Same thing. If you are interested in buying, you got to work your bids down below and just be darn patient and just wait. 
right? My hunch is probably do something like this, something like this, something like this, and then we're gonna we can go and buy. But this has got a lot of cleaning up to do. Can't touch it. And internals, there's nothing here internally for me to get excited about either. For the traders of the community, and remember, if we're traders, that means we can get stopped out, right? You got to uh, identify uh, your risk threshold and don't break that 5% rule under any circumstance. We might be able to see like a bot set up trying to form off of these lows. But I'm not really the biggest fan of trading setups on these altcoins and especially uh, coins that, um, can I duplicate that? I guess not. I, especially coins that um, trade on, um, you know, illiquid markets. Keep in mind, Cryptopia, never market buy on this place. You see these insane tails. They're subject to insane stop runs. So I don't even really like the idea of you thinking about uh, trading things like bot setups here. It's just, it's fraught with danger. And if anything, you know, we had a nice little double bottom and it looks like they're running those lows now. So I can't even have a conversation about things like bot with you on these. And really, I don't recommend trading bots off of these kind of assets because you get stopped out very, very quickly. And of course, stop loss orders on cryptopia might turn into well you're your stop you got to hit the bid there is no bid the market's completely a liquid and you get filled like right down here shitty so again i'm just gonna have to take a pass on this and i'm gonna say that i um i would not recommend anybody think about uh accumulating here too dangerous Okay, uh, as I said, I do have to uh, head off to the boy. Um, I think um, I'm going to leave it at that for today. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I had to do a big dose of PMA. I do understand that we are going to have to be doing a lot of PMA sessions over the next probably 6 to 12 months. This is going to be a major, major challenge for all of you new people to the site and new people to trading and new people to investing to see whether you can actually survive at this game. Keep in mind, Brian's been at this forever. Brian's not going anywhere. Brian takes low risk. Brian's sitting on a shitload of cash. Why would you do anything different? Play from a position of strength. Don't put yourself into a position where you don't have outs. And always... Who can tell me over on YouTube, what is your number one job as a trader? And you all should be answering this. Hazriel Fell, Brian XAOS, Martha, what is your number one job? <laughs> Kevin, you're evil, man. <laughs> no, I never said that, Michael. We, how many times do CME floor traders get stopped out? What's the, what is the, the percentage of trades that you're going to get stopped out? You are going to lose money at this, Michael. Get used to it. And especially if you're like a trader and you don't want to be sitting on little old lady positions and paper losses, you're going to have to get used to losing money. That's just, that is a part of the speculative process. But we told you that when you do make money, you got to make damn sure that your winners are much bigger than your average losers. That's the key to making money at this game over the long run. But everybody must wake up in the every single day remembering this number one job of yours. Thank you, Martha. It is to make sure that you can come back and play the game again tomorrow. That is your number one job. Do not blow yourself up. Now, if it means that you have to sit on a bunch of paper losses for a while and cool your jets until the market turns, well, so be it. If it means you got to go get a job pumping gas or flipping burgers to make sure that the uh, baby's medication is paid for, well, so be it. But don't go and blow yourself up. And my advice through all of you is take the opportunity now 
to learn how to manage your behavior, to learn how to be patient, to learn how to always keep a little bit of powder dry. If that means that you have to reduce your bets to less than 1%, a half a percent, a quarter of a percent, but to always make sure that you have at least a little bit of powder dry to keep playing the game, well, so be it. But your number one job is to make sure that you can come back and watch Brian's crazy videos tomorrow. All right, everybody. Um, I think I'm going to leave it at that. You have yourselves a great day. I hope the YouTube community enjoyed this. Uh, try and remember PMA for the win. As I said, I, I was really privileged. I was treated. I was spoiled. I got to enjoy this crypto experience. Uh, obviously, we're playing with a, from a position of strength. Enjoy this, guys. Enjoy the process. Life goes by very, very quickly. Maybe you fucked up this cycle. So be it. We all fuck up. We're human. It's the way it goes. Don't give up. Brush the dust off. Like I said, if you got to get a second job flipping burgers to make sure the rent's paid, fine, do it. But while you're at it, try and smell the roses as you're walking along. Because life goes, and if you don't stop and smell the roses sometimes, you just might miss it. Okay, guys, all the best. Much love. I'm trying to come back from the absolute purest perspective. I honestly believe that the people on the other side actually asked me to do this for you people. We're never going to win all the time. Everybody understand that. You're never going to win all the time. And you may have to go through periods where you just got to sit on your hands and do fucking nothing. That's capitalism for you. I always come back from this, from the most honorable um, stance. I'm here to try and help you people. I think I have helped a lot of people. The feedback I've gotten is that the service that I've done for this community has been greatly appreciated. I do understand that I fuck up sometimes. I'm not perfect. Nobody is. But I have absolutely the most 100% honorable intentions for all of you. So have yourselves a great day. Enjoy life as much as you can, even though it might be a little bit bleak right now. It's okay. We'll get through this. Fight for tomorrow. Have yourselves a great day. God bless, and bye for now.